Welcome back to the series I am doing on the different profile lines and importance of a clear brand. I think one of the most important things you're going to take away from this is one, the nuances, right? I get a lot of messages of, well, what about, for example, here, a 2-4 or 5-2? That is exactly what I help my clients with, the nuances of your human design. That's number one that we want to take away. And that is my specialty <laughs> of helping you in your business is looking at the nuances and how it applies to your design. Number two, what I want you guys to take away is when we're looking at the profile lines, it's not that there's these massive shifts. It is in the nuances and how it's presented, how you position yourself and why you position yourself in such a way. One of the things that I believe is, oh, how do I want to put this? The biggest detriment to people's success when they're looking at leveraging human design in the online space is believing that it's this massive shift based on their design that, well, because I'm this design or I am this type or I'm this profile, well, I don't have to do market research. I don't have to show up. I just have to lean back, right? When there's all these narratives that are happening in the online space surrounding human design that are not correct, are not true, and tend to lead people off track. One of the ones that comes to mind right away, I mean, actually, there's two big ones. The projectors are not here to work, right? That's not true. <laughs> it has nothing to do with business. And two, I hear a lot of the manifesting generator is a hybrid of the manifester and the generator. And that's not true either. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions in regards to that is the motor to the throat. So your sacral to the throat, right? You're going to have a motor connected to the throat, which makes you a manifesting generator. However, the manifesting generator is a generator. Same way the projector has different subtypes. So we see all of these narratives that happen in the online space. And it's not that because you're a certain design or you're a certain type, well, now certain aspects of growing a business don't apply to you. That's not what it is about. It's about looking at the nuances. And this is what I'm going to help you guys with in Branded by Design is looking at the nuances. How does it apply to you? How does it apply to your business? And how can we amplify your strengths, your design in a way that attracts the right people so that you're differentiated, so that people are seeing you in a sea of white sheep? We can look at human design as being such a big one in the industry that's becoming fucking saturated. Right. So if you're not differentiating yourself, why are people picking you? Why are people stopping the scroll on you? And it's not going to be because you put a post up about human design or about business strategy or whatever the case may be. You, your unfair advantage, your unique selling proposition, which is month one in brand by design, is what's going to allow you to stand out. And it is not and never will be that just because you're a certain design, aspects of business don't apply to you. And to be honest, I believe this is why so many people are burning out, why there has been a big churn and burn in the industry right now, because people are under this belief that, well, because this is my design or this is how I'm designed, I don't have to do X, Y, and Z. I don't have to think long-term. I don't have to plan long-term. I don't have to worry about strategy. I just have to lean back. All of these stories, all of these narratives that are not supporting people building an actual business. What people are building you guys know this. This is a signature saying I have in my brand. What they're doing is building a hamster wheel. And that hamster wheel gets bigger and bigger and bigger as they go. And one of two things happen at that place. People burn out and they leave the industry and they're like, well, it's so much easier to just work in corporate and not have to worry about this shit. Or two, they build a hamster wheel. They're making a lot of money and they hit a plateau and their business cannot scale past a certain amount because of the hamster wheel they built. So we really want to start thinking a business like a business <laughs> and putting in practical strategy that allows you to grow a sustainable and scalable business. All right. That's what I want to say first. It's the nuances. It's not this complete overhaul. Overhaul. It's not this get out of jail free card that now business doesn't apply to you or certain aspects of business don't apply to you. So the second lines and importance of a clear brand. Let's dive in. When we are, you guys have heard me say this over and over again, especially in this series, when we are building a brand paid directly by the people we serve, they are not buying what you offer. 
here's the thing. If people were truly buying BG5 or human design, they wouldn't hire you. They would go to the International Human Design School or the BG5 Institute. They wouldn't hire you. If people are really just buying gene keys, they would go to genekeys.com and hire Richard Ride. <laughs> if people were really buying simply manifestation, this can sting, but they're likely going to someone like Manifestation Babe, Catherine Zinkita, because she's a big name. People are not buying necessarily what you offer. They are saying yes to the movement you are creating, regardless of line. This applies to everyone. Now, the movement we're creating and the positioning we create that in is going to shift based on our design and not just based on profile. Wait till you guys get into branded by design and you see the nuances week to week we build upon. It's going to blow your mind. So people are saying yes to you and the movement you are a stand for. Well, the first thing you have to do is differentiate yourself. Congratulations, you're a natural second line. That's not convincing me to buy from you. That's not stopping my scroll just because you're a natural. That's nice for you, but how does it help me? So what we want to look at when you're building your business is what is the movement you're a stand for based on your natural genius? So you guys have seen, I've said this for every single design that we've talked about, every single line we've talked about so far. What is the movement you are a stand for and the tangible results that go into that, that come from that, that are a natural extension of it. And that movement you're a stand for is going to be rooted in your natural genius. Now, where a lot of second lines get really distracted is they're like, okay, this person called me out for this, and this person called me out for this, and this person called me out for this, and now they're building businesses within their business. And I see this happen all the time with second lines, and there's nothing less attractive and less magnetic right? It's like one day it's a childhood trauma healing program. And the next month it's business manifestation. And the next month it's talking to your spirit guides. And then the next month it's business strategy, right? And they're all over the map. And there can be this narrative for the second line of, but I've been called out for all these things. Well, you're getting distracted. Those are businesses within the business. That's not scaling sustainable business. You want to position yourself as the go-to expert. That is the natural but you're still the go-to expert because as soon as your marketing, your message, your brand starts building businesses within the business, you start to turn people off, right? People need to see you as a go-to expert because you're just, maybe, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe you're born that way and you're just born that way, baby. People are attracted to that. However, if you continually position yourself as, well, I'm the natural and that's why you should hire me. Only 20% of your marketing from a business strategy perspective should be about you. 80% should be about the customer, about your audience. So if you're continuously positioning, well, I'm the natural, that's why you should hire me. One, it's not going to stop the scroll. People aren't going to be convinced. And two, ah, shit, two is a shit. I just realized I forgot to switch the internet to get the best quality. Shit. I'm sorry, guys, if this is really shitty quality. I meant to switch the internet I was accessing before I got started. That's okay. We're going to make it through. I just realized that. And if you're over on Instagram, you can join me on YouTube. It might be a little bit more grainy because I am streaming to so many platforms right now. And I didn't switch to the internet. I needed to be able to do that. So I apologize about that. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> So when we're looking at brand storytelling and the extension of your marketing, when we're looking at the second line, it's creating the emotional connection as your natural genius. However, not positioning you, right? If again, if 80% of your marketing is positioning you and 20% is positioning your audience and how your natural genius helps them, will you have it backwards? So what we want to look at is creating a process, creating a narrative that reflects the company's, your company's values, mission, and vision. This is going to be values, mission, vision, unique selling proposition. And there's something else I'm forgetting is all month one in branded by design. We are week by week nailing it. And you might think, well, Ashley, I already have my values, I already have my mission. 
this isn't how you're expecting it. All right. We are literally going through your body graph and the specific ways that raw or who and the BG5 business Institute has deconstructed it to create keynotes within your values, mission, vision, unique selling proposition. Why does that matter? Because those keynotes are going to resonate with the right people. Those keynotes are going to take out the guesswork of shit. Does my brand actually reflect me? Does it really reflect what I'm here to do? Does it reflect my purpose? Is there a better way of saying this? We're taking all the guesswork out and we're differentiating your, you in the market. So even if you say, well, I've been around for a while, I already know this stuff. You haven't seen it like how we're going to do it in Brandon by design. So again, like I said, if we're only highlighting how things come naturally to you, it isn't enough. It isn't enough. I'm going to scroll away. I really don't care how, pay attention here. I don't care how or why it's natural to you until I know how you help me. And this is what stops the scroll is positioning your audience letting them know how it's relevant to them. And then you can story tell with how it's your natural genius, but you have to stop the scroll first human psychology. And we can deny it and say, well, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to my brand. Human psychology doesn't shift. It doesn't change. Buying psychology, sales psychology doesn't shift. It doesn't change. You need the, what stops the scroll is why it's relevant to the people that are watching you, why it's relevant to the people in your community. And if it's always about you, which is, like I said, a big error I see with the second lines or not just always about you, but how things are so natural for you or this clever marketing that's a little bit muddy because you're being recognized, seen and recognized if you're a projector for many things or you're being called out for many things. So you're beginning to build businesses within your business. That's going to hurt your brand. And if you have a five line within there, if you're the double projection to five, it's going to be that much harder to come back from it. If you're, if you have a four in there, it's not going to be as hard, but if you have a five, it's going to be much more difficult to bounce back from that. So the reasons I'm so passionate about storytelling rather than falling back on, well, it's just what I'm natural at <laughs> is it differentiates you. It showcases your strengths and your wisdom, and it draws your line in the sand, which is what we want to do, which by drawing your line in the sand as being the go-to expert, it prevents some of those projections that could draw you off track or at least creates some safeguards around those projections so that you're not being pulled off track. Because it's human nature. We're always taking in information through our open centers. We're always taking in information through our open centers. It's are you identifying with it? Are you identifying with those call-outs that don't support you or not? Are you staying on track? with what your natural genius is. And again, this is going to be a massive place that the second lines are meeting resistance in their business. So why do I harp on profile in building your brands over and over and over and over again? I'm constantly har harping on profile. The public world describes your authentic character on the stage of life. So it's the costume of our life purpose. It's our mechanical potentials and limitations. It frames the specific ways we interact and impact others. It indicates how you fulfill your life purpose, allows you to live correctly within your public role. And where I'm going to be helping you guys within brand by design, you know, I had someone the other day say, aren't with these series, aren't you afraid to give away too much? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This is basic bitch level. Wait till you get into brand by design or you work with me. Like this is basic. I don't even care giving away this because it's such basic bitch level that honestly, if I'm being honest, if you haven't nailed this part, working with me in a high level probably isn't the right next step for you because I don't want to be going over this shit we're nailing at higher levels, right? So what we're looking at brand by design is, is the two conscious? Is it unconscious? The, if it's conscious, you're going to have more control over it, but how does that impact your brand? What is the other line of your profile and how can we create a brand that amplifies you, amplifies your profile, and then the marketing, marketing and copywriting as an extension of that? Five, two here, all the projections. So it's, you know, the, it's going to happen. It's going to happen with any profile. It's going to happen when we're just human and people are going to say, Hey, <laughs> have you, have you tried this? Did you think of that? And it's our job to make sure we are not getting distracted by those things. 
So in business, the second line is known as the natural. I feel the hermit. And even when Ra Ru, who created business language for human design and a business approach for human design, it was because he realized that this shit didn't apply to business. <laughs> and I see this all the time in the online space is people are saying, oh, I'm the hermit. I'm the second line. I can't do that. I'm the hermit. I'm the second line. I just... I just need to be on my own so I can't show up. How are people to, supposed to buy from you if you're not showing up? So they're not running ads for the omnipresence. They're not showing up because they're a quote unquote second line. And then wondering why their business isn't growing. It's like, all right, well, we need to make a decision here. Are you running ads for your omnipresence? And ads are going to only work if you have a brand that works with your current audience. Ads will not fix holes if your messaging is shit. Or two, are you showing up? So Ra Ruhu had changed the language because truthfully, the word hermit does not, it's not useful in business at all. So the second line is known as the natural or potential talent, <laughs> as Ra would say, talent or not in business. Now, when we're looking at this, yes, you're someone who needs to be in your own space, have time to do your own thing to do what comes natural to you. However, here's the thing that we need to keep in mind with the second line as well. Once you're called out, that kind of shyness, that hermit aspect is not really there, not to the extent it was before. So again, people are allowing this conditioning of what it means to be a second line to dictate their business then complain that their business isn't growing. Right? As I always say, we can have our dreams or our drama. We can't have both. Remember, each profile is different. So the natural influencer would be the 2-4 versus the natural messenger, which be, would be the 2-5 versus the natural leader, 6-2, the messenger that's natural, 5-2. And how that shows up in your brand and messaging is going to be completely different. The most important thing is allowing people to feel and connect with your passion for what you do and what you are the expert in. One of the first things I do when I look at my clients, Instagram, so say Instagram's their main selling pro platform. One of the first things I do is look at their IG profile. Is it clear what you do? A lot of the time it's something really fluffy, like find your feminine flow, find your purpose, <laughs> helping you access da, 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 right? Like really fucking fluffy where I land on it. And I think, I don't know what you do. And not only do I not know what you do, but you blend in with the 1.1 million other accounts. There is nothing that makes you stand out here. So why should I be buying from you? Why should I stop the scroll on you? Resonating with the distraction. Mm -hmm. In branding and business for the second lines, one of the biggest things is bringing passion and creativity to the table. This is, of course, going to be a follow a lot of natural extension of your innate genius. Now, one of the things I always say to my second lines, when they start working with me and they go, I haven't had a call out yet. Bullshit. I don't believe it. Bullshit doesn't fly here. <laughs> Using your design as an excuse, please do not sign up for Branded by Design, my mastermind, if you're using or intend on using your design as an excuse for why not you, why not now, why whatever, right? To fight for your drama. If you are over the age of probably 12, you've been called out probably for a lot of things, probably for a lot. And especially if you're someone that's going to be working with me, not only have you been called out for a lot of things, but you've been in the game long enough to notice the drama around it on why you haven't stepped into that yet. So you're here to bring passion and creativity to the table. Stop the stories around why not you, why not now. You are here to shake up the world, to provoke, to inspire, to enliven. You're here to connect us with higher principles. In a way, it translates to your brand and transformation and in a clear way. <laughs> Please make it clear. There's a quiet confidence. Now, again, based on the full profile that you have, that's going to look different. The 2-4 feels friendly and welcoming to people. Whereas the two five has more of that grittiness. The five is always going to carry grittiness. I think Ra called it nastiness, nastiness to it. 
which always makes, especially my spiritual clients in the beginning, kind of uncomfortable, but it's true. Look at Ra Ruhu. He was not afraid to ruffle feathers. He was not afraid to say it like it was. He would walk into trainings and tell people right off the bat he didn't even want to be there. <laughs> he, from the day one of the human design system, said he hated spiritual gurus. He didn't want to be seen as one, right? He was not afraid to separate himself as the authority. He was not afraid to have that nastiness and the grittiness come out. I think that's why I'm so obsessed with a really embodied fifth line is there is this grittiness, especially like the manifestor fifth lines. I work with so many manifestor fifth lines and there's just this grittiness, right? That comes from like this quiet confidence as well. It's not egotistical confidence. It's this quiet confidence of this is what my message is. This is what my voice is. Take it or leave it. The big error of many is fluffy messaging that is way too broad, which may create initial success, but eventually plateaus. I see this with a lot of second lines. They have a surge of their business where they may even be hitting those six figure months. And then they hit a plateau or even go backwards in the business because they have very broad messaging. It's very fluffy and they're ultimately building businesses within the business which we are going to stop that in Branded by Design, the mastermind. Examples of second lines, Blake Lively. I just love her. I mean, I'm never, I don't think I would say she's my favorite actress, but I just love her. She's so sweet. She's so bubbly. Or the relationship with her and Ryan is really cool. And she's just so naturally beautiful. And not even necessarily in, you know, attributing that to society standards or anything. She just glows. There's a natural fluidity about her. She just floats. That's the second line. Rihanna. So you guys know if you've been here, I'm so obsessed with Rihanna. Bad girl Riri. There's this natural ability with her, this natural grittiness with her. She's, I just love Rihanna. Adele, Maya Angelou, Tony Robbins, Oprah. These are examples of second lines. And even looking at Tony Robbins, when I first got in the self-development space, I was attracted to how natural he made it seem. I, at the time, really had this almost insecurity. I'm a four line. There is insecurity in the four. This insecurity around being loud and being like just a big personality. I also have a lot of definition in my design. I'm a lot. <laughs> I'm a lot. And there was a little bit of an insecurity around that. When I saw Tony on stages, I don't even know how I originally found him. I mean, you, I've been to UPW multiple times. I have all his everything, everything he's done other than I think I haven't done date with destiny or one of the relationship ones, but I've done it. And I continuously come back to his world because I'm so obsessed with how natural he makes being you look and unleashing the power of that's just been innate within you, how natural he makes it look. And I will continually go back to his world over and over and over again. He's a second line. Marketing your work is done through your brand voice. So there are a lot of people saying a lot of things, but there's a big difference in saying things online and using your voice to create change. How are you using your voice to create change? Get to know others in your niche. This is going to be really important for the second lines. Market research. I know it's so old school. It's so bro marketing. Market research. And begin to leverage what your value is, what your natural value is within the market that sets you apart. But it's not only going to be because you are the natural. That is lazy ass marketing. Lazy ass marketing. What is the gap in the market your natural genius fills and what makes you stand out? Critical for the second line. You have to connect with people in a clear way, especially the two fours. There's a very big danger for the two fours of being so inspirational, but not converting. You must be seen as a go-to expert in something that comes naturally to you. And you have already had that invitation and call out. It's time to take action on it. Get over your drama and step into your dreams. So there's a couple of things I focus on. Oh, I didn't change the slide, but it's okay. It's a free training on YouTube. <laughs> I didn't change the first line to the second line. However, everything else has changed in here. A couple of things I focus on with my new second line clients. One powerful, clear, clear positioning that sets them apart as a go-to expert, leveraging what makes you the natural. But you are still 
clearly the go-to expert. Storytelling in a way that incorporates and leverages both the lines in your profile. A 2-4 is a world apart from a 6-2. Not even in the same baseball field. And making sure your brand is attuned to that is critical. All roads lead back to a clear client pathway with a long-term viable plan. This is going to ease the fears of those expectations and projections of others. Stay clear, stay concise, nail your niche, nail your messaging, and tune out the noise. Tune out the distractions, tune out the projections that have nothing to do with anything that only make business harder for you. Becoming self-aware, or sorry, aware of self-sabotage patterns and distractions, which start to make their message go broad. I noticed with second lines, I help them narrow down and gain clarity, and then they tend to slowly start to go wider again. Noticing, becoming aware of those self-sabotage patterns and distractions is critical. Now, this depends on your individual design. This isn't something I can help you with on a free training on YouTube or my podcast. This is why I'm so obsessed with something like Branded by Design. It's a small group mastermind, so I get to help you figure this shit out. And the issue is as well, if you are in a self-sabotage pattern within your distractions, that's your, so the distractions are your openness, right? That's where we get distracted. Your definition is your strength. It can still be an unhealthy state. So your definition is your strength and it is either aligned, living it, or another way that we express it or we experience the definition is an unhealthy state. So healthy, aligned, unhealthy, not aligned. The openness is where we get distracted. We start identifying with the information we're taking in. So a second line is going to get those projections. It's, you know, maybe if we're looking at a projector, it's going to be seen and recognized for certain things and getting these invitations. And it's going broad, 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 broad. And now all of a sudden we've had the projector, say, 6-2, create their client pathway. Pathways is going to be month two in Brand by Design they've created this. Well, now they're starting to go wider again. The problem, the main problem is going to be you sell through your openness. If you are distracted within your openness, it's going to be exceptionally difficult to sell through your openness. Actually, it's going to be impossible. So what we want to do is in month one, we have powerful positioning. In month two, we have products and pathways. In month three, we have sales. And that's when we get into leveraging your design for copywriting and sales and making more money being you. Why is it month three? Well, we want to nail everything in before it, then look at where are you getting distracted? What is your openness? And how can we leverage that as wisdom and for sales? A clear transformation and solution. Clever is the enemy of the second line due to the natural fears of the second line and the projections. And people want to know, know not just what you are good at, but how you can help them. Remember this second lines. Tattoo it on your forehead. <laughs> how do I help? Right? 80% of your copy and marketing should be about your audience, should be about who you help and how your natural genius helps them. Your copy should be you. Right? Not I. 20% is I. 80% you. And remember those nuances. If I'm hiring a second line, it's that, like I was talking about with Tony Robbins, that natural ease, the fluidity. I am inspired. I am, I'm very inspired by the way you do the thing you're selling. How it comes so natural to you. And I want a piece of that. I want to understand how to be like that. And so we can leverage that in your copy and marketing in a way that also positions you as the authority, as a go-to expert without just being inspirational because that's that's scary when we get into only inspirational <laughs> that's when people start messaging you they're like i love your content it is amazing i just hired sally for that thing or i love your content it's amazing well i just went to gene keys and purchased all the co the courses there that's the problem you start to get into right sorry guys would the mastermind be suitable for product based businesses. Um, if you guys have quest specific questions about the mastermind, don't hesitate to DM me. I'm happy to help you guys to see if it's right for you. Think of Rihanna. 
her brand blew up as bad girl Riri, especially. And we think of a second line and differentiating yourself as that go-to expert and very specifically separating yourself in your niche. Rihanna came out at a time where it was very much, let's be honest, blonde girls with pop, rot your teeth out music. Like it was so sugary sweet, the music. She came out and she took a stand. She separated herself from the Mandy Moores, the Britney Spears, the Christina Aguilera's, the Jessica Simpsons. I mean, how many more can I add that were basically different record labels trying to recreate Britney Spears' success? She came out and she made a stand for herself and she didn't get distracted. This is the biggest thing, Second Lines. It wasn't one day she was bad girl Riri and the next day it was like pop bubblegum girl next door music. She had a very discernible brand that she stayed true to the entire time. And then when she nailed her brand in music, she went to makeup and she became a billionaire with it. She's not out there endorsing everything. She's not all over the map. You know what you are getting when you tune into Rihanna, when you purchase her offers, when you are in her world, you know what you are getting. She's not all, all over. She's very strategic with her brand and it pays off as will it for all second lines. The most important takeaway I want you to look at is stop dumbing down your expertise. Stop dumbing it down. The second line, first of all, you have a whole ass body graph, right? It's not just the second line. Your profile is how people see you. So there's two aspects of that right off the bat. You're conscious and unconscious. We want to look at, yes, what comes easy to you but if we only, I've said this a million times, I'm going to say it again. If we only position you, we alienate your audience. We don't want to do that. You're growing a business. You're not here to be an influencer. Don't create influencer-like content, right? You're a coach. You're a healer. You are an expert. Content creator slash influencer is not what you do. And there's a very different way as a second line, you're going to create content. However, if you're leaning into that, positioning yourself, it alienates your audience. And that's where we hear a lot of these influencers that have multiple million followers and they came and sell a t-shirt. Another thing, second lines, just because it comes easy to you doesn't mean you need to almost, you know, and here's the thing I want to laugh because I always talk about being a basic bitch myself. However, essentially what I want to say here is stop solving broke people's problems and begin to elevate the problems your natural genius is solving. And what I mean by that is a lot of second lines are looking at, well, this comes so natural and they're undercharging. They're dumbing it down. They're trying to solve the masses problems rather than really elevating their natural genius and who they help. Hey guys, and I apologize if you're catching me on YouTube or Instagram. I forgot to switch my internet to the one that supports streaming on five different platforms. So the quality is going to be shit, but you can check out the podcast. I'll upload the audio for you guys as well. I apologize about that. We have one internet stream I use for this type of stream where I have multiple platforms and I forgot to switch over. All right. In the online space, as I always say, people tend to be unwilling to niche down. And instead, you know, they say, well, I'm speaking to my soul fractals. It's the same thing. You are designed to speak to someone specific. And we're going to look at that as well. When we look at, that's what I was in powerful positioning that I forgot to mention earlier is who you're speaking to, because that's in your design. I speak to the naturals. I'm actually designed to help the second line put words and strategy to their natural genius. That is exactly what I'm designed to do. It's why my world is filled with second lines or simply those that are naturals. So when we're looking at this, we still want to speak to the smallest viable audience. You are designed to work with someone very specific. And it is my belief that the refusal to niche down is causing only a few people to break through to the upper echelons of the coaching industry or the healing industries. Those with very specific niches, I have people saying, you guys have heard me say this over and over again, those that come to me and they say, oh my gosh, or my masterminds, right? And they see someone just take off. It's as if they got in like a rocket to space, right? Their business is just exploding. What are they doing? They are speaking to the smallest viable audience. Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, <laughs> that is what they are doing. That is what is going to make you stand out. And especially for the second line, remember those projections 
those call outs can get you really distracted. And now you're starting to solve or try to solve so many people's problems and you're creating all these businesses within the business and you're getting burned out. And again, Rihanna is an example. She doesn't try to appease to everyone. She's very specific in who she's for. So the next steps, if you're looking to go above and beyond this, like I said, I don't worry about giving away a training like this. Other people would charge for a training like this. Let's be quite honest. <laughs> I don't worry about this because this is so basic bitch of what I do that we are light years beyond this. When you work with me and branded by design, we're this, I want you to have these foundations. <laughs> if you don't have these foundations, brand by design isn't for you. So this is the bare bones basics of what my clients need to be working with me. And Brandon by design, we're looking at, like I said, putting words to through the keynotes of your profile, your value and just month one, your values, your mission, your unique selling proposition, who you're here to speak to and creating copy and marketing specifically for them. And month one is powerful positioning. That is our focus. We, I don't care if you're at six figure months, if you had hundred K, we're looking at how do we refine your brand to hit 200K a month, 500K a month. I have clients that I've helped hit seven figures a month, a month through refinement. And that's the CEO mindset is not, well, I know that already. I already have a vision. It's how do I refine it to grow my business even more in a sustainable and scalable way? How do I refine my copywriting, my message in a way that speaks with the right people? So that you, as a second line, can stop dumbing down your natural genius and speaking to the right people that want to pay for your shit because you're growing a business. This is a business. It's not a hobby. So if Brandon by Design is for you, you can DM me or check out the link in my bio on Instagram. I'll drop it in spot or in Spotify. I always use Spotify in the podcast notes and on YouTube. And again, I apologize if you caught this on Instagram, if you caught this on YouTube. I apologize about the video quality. I will put the link on both platforms so that you can head over to the podcast once it, it is up and listen to the audio if you're like, I can't deal with the staticky connection. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. I will be back. I believe I have it scheduled tomorrow for the third line. I'll see you then. All right. And, and over here. Bye.